Banana is their absolute favorite. Oh! <laughs> Still rolling? <laughs> Going into the ice cold pond to get him out would be great. Is it cold? Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> great weight. Actually, you're looking a little thick. It's possible that this one is gravid. Gravid means that she could be holding an egg or two. And, well, there's my little gift. Thank you. Guys, these are new. Come on. Well, it's cold, finally. Everybody out here is asleep, getting the winter rest that they so much deserve. Uh, the only thing really going on out here are noisy goats, but there's a lot to do still indoors. So what do you say we warm up together and we get to work? All the way down, but he's away. What if you stand right here? He's not hungry, he's not. No, and like lean in and get him. Going into the ice cold pond to get him out would be great. Why don't you take off your jacket? Indominus Jim, who is our hybrid male wood turtle blandings turtle, he's 50 50. You guys have seen him in a ton of videos. Um, I don't know what's been going on this year, but he has become more aggressive than ever, and he's actually been beating up our male wood turtles to the point where they're not comfortable staying in the water most of the time. Now the wood turtle that's basking up there, he's doing all right, but he does have some pretty nasty cuts that are healing up on his neck. So I have no choice but to get him out of here. He is awake, again, great lake species, so he's not that cold. And I'm gonna move him to an enclosure up front where he can't mess with anybody. Um, wish me luck. This slept one more time. Is it cold? Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm being such a chicken right now. Ah, this is freezing. Okay. Oh, Woohoo! There he is. And of course, he's unscathed because he's always doing the beating up. The Dominus Jim is actually sterile. Uh, as many hybrids are. So he was born or hatched in 1996 uh, at a different location and uh, he's never been able to breed even though he attempts over and over and over again uh, because he's sterile. So let's uh, not leave him too exposed to the cold air for long. Get him up here. All right, I'm gonna let him sleep in this aquascape pond uh, where there's nobody that he can really mess with because the turtles in here are hibernating on land, which are the Chinese box turtles. Again, he only messes with wood turtles. He doesn't mess with anybody else. So uh, at least in here, he will not choose violence. So much for staying warm. All right, first thing to do, we're gonna soak the pancake tortoises. The African pancake tortoises that we have here from the TSA, uh, because I don't like to keep water inside their enclosure. It's just a breeding ground for bacteria because the tortoises constantly go in and out of it. Any of you that work with tortoises, whether it's in the zoo field or the private sector, what have you, you know how disgusting they can be with water. And when it comes to an arid species like the pancake, I really don't like having water in there with them. Um, so we do artificial rains for them because they like to drink from puddles that form on the rocks as they would in their native Africa. And then I give them soaks periodically. I don't do it often because forcing soaks too often is not good. Now when it comes to babies, of course, they should always have a humid environment and access to water, but we're dealing with fully grown adults that originally came from Africa, if you recall their story. So, the hard part. What I need to do is reach into all these rock crevices and start rounding them up, getting them into some warm, shallow water so that they can drink and evacuate their systems. Yes, that means poop. But because they're capable of inflating their lungs, which then expands the body, it's very hard to pull them out. And they do this even in captivity. 
Okay, there's one right up here. I actually think it's the only one up here, which makes things extra difficult because this rock goes all the way back. And there's our little Euromastix buddy in there, hanging out with the pancake tortoise. Euromastix have very similar care to arid tortoise species like pancakes. So they make good enclosure meats. And they also eat the same things. Oh gosh, you look awesome. This is a good time for me to check the health of these animals because they are very secretive. They of course come out to eat. And when I do the artificial rains, they'll drink from right here, these little divots that form puddles. But you don't see this species too often because they're supposed to hide. Right there, see that? That's that soft shell or pliable shell. It's not a shell rot, but it's how this species can expand its body. Get that right. She looks awesome. So I'm looking for things like nice, thick, strong head muscles, clean nostrils, no discharge or anything, and a good weight. You know, you don't want them to feel skinny or a hollow or anything. Bright eyes. She's got it all. Get that right, Mama. In you go. Bath time. So far back. You know, as tough as this is to get to these animals, even in a setting like this, it's awesome to see them exhibiting the natural behaviors that they are supposed to. And look, she's drinking right now. Look at this girl. She's gonna gorge herself with water, and that's excellent. That's exactly what I want her to do. But, fun little fact, when you go to soak tortoises, if you notice that they're not actively drinking, they're just kind of walking around in it or sitting in it, but not actually dipping the head or nose down to take a drink, that does not mean they are not actually getting hydrated. And that's because they can take water in through the cloaca, which is the vent or opening on the tail. So similar to a way an aquatic turtle can absorb oxygen through the cloaca when they're in hibernation or when they're underwater holding their breath, a tortoise can absorb water through the cloaca when they are soaking. And they also take it in through the skin too. So all around, a bath is good. Let's get somebody else. Oh, man, you're running for me too. <laughs> Hello! And you look awesome too. Great weight. Actually, you're looking a little thick. It's possible that this one is gravid. Gravid means that she could be holding an egg or two. And, well, there's my little gift. Thank you. This is the time of year when pancake tortoises will lay their eggs. So it's possible one or more of these has an egg inside them. There you go. Liking what I'm seeing. Really, really looks awesome. And when you look at how thin they are because they're flat, they're so streamlined, they're almost, they look as though they're almost designed for an aquatic life because of how streamlined they are. But they are in fact designed for an arid lifestyle, fully terrestrial, to where they can squeeze into these rock crevices. This critically endangered species is still being poached pretty heavily and people are going out there with car jacks and actually lifting up and breaking apart the habitat, these precious rock crevices and, and outcrops that the animals live in to get to the tortoises. So not only are they taking them out of the wild, but they're actually destroying the habitat too. It's really sad. Ah, this is a girl I really wanted to check out. So this pancake tortoise has an interesting story. She is not one that originally came out of Africa. She's a captive bred animal that was kept by a couple and uh, they needed to find her a new home. And she kind of went through some stuff. So what happened was she had climbed out of her enclosure. Pancake tortoises are designed to climb. That's why they have these upper areas. But you still have to make sure they're secure. They rarely topple, but when they do, you wanna make sure that they land on the soft substrate inside the enclosure. This animal, unfortunately, was able to get up and out of its enclosure and it fell onto the ground, and then it also suffered a dog attack. So you can see here, it's um, she's pretty chewed up. But good news for her, these animals are resilient. Nothing vital was harmed, and she has made a full recovery. So as gnarly as this looks, guys, this is all good stuff. This is all healed up and uh, she's really doing fantastic. And out of all of them, she's got a really bold personality. So I'm really happy with her progress so far. It is amazing 
how hard it is to pull them out when they do that. Really remarkable. Such an interesting behavior, and I've said it before, pancake tortoises kind of go against all the things that we're used to when it comes to turtles and tortoises. They're flat, they don't have the arc, they have pliable shells, they live up high in rock crevices. Really, really amazing stuff. And this girl looks awesome too. Something else really cool here is this species is displaying something else for us, and that's the fact that they are communal. This is a tortoise that naturally groups together in the tightest crevices imaginable, and all the way in the back corner, there are two right on top of each other like a short stack of pancakes. Got one. Nice big female. She looks awesome too. And you know, it's, it's cooler back there. So that's another thing they do. They naturally hide in these rocks, not just to escape possible predation, but to also try to cool off because, well, it's really hot in Africa and it's really hot inside this enclosure. There's another lady. So I'm gonna let these ladies soak. There's still more we've gotta get out of here, but there's no more room in this bin, so I gotta get another bin or let this round soak and then swap some others out with some fresh water. But I really like what I'm seeing. This is the kind of stuff that I always wanna see healthy animals behaving in a natural manner, even in captive management. And you know, the pancake tortoise, I've become such a major fan of over the years. I've had them on and off throughout my life, but when this group came to us from the TSA, it really tugged on my heartstrings and we've given them so much between the outdoor enclosures and the indoor enclosures and just trying to learn as much as possible about them. And uh, it's, it's a sad fate for them in the wild, it really is. But luckily, there are really responsible people that are doing good with these in captivity and producing actual captive bred animals. You know, because one day that might be all that's left with the way things are going on out there in the wild. So, let's let them finish up. We gotta move on to somebody else. They're all ready for me. All right, easy, 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 easy. We've got Rocky and Blue here. Come on, girl. Come on, come on up. Both of you, come on. Watch my fingers, watch my fingers. That's you. Come on, leave him alone. Come on, come on. All right. Rocky and Blue, our rhinoceros iguana, is getting their little treat of banana. Their diet is not unlike that of a tortoise. They're eating flowers and greens, broadleaf greens and weeds, that kind of stuff, 90% of the time. But we do give them some fruit, and they really, really do appreciate it. Banana is their absolute favorite. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. Banana is their absolute favorite. Uh, but I unfortunately have to give it to them occasionally because it is not the best thing for them. Easy, do not bite her. Rocky and Blue are indoors for the winter and they will go back outside in the spring when it warms up, hopefully by April. They're a lot of fun to spend time with though here indoors. This species of iguana is actually endangered, not unlike the pancake tortoise. And, um, ooh. not to be confused with the green iguana. They come from the island of Hispaniola, where they live on rocks mostly, and on the ground, because they are not a tree iguana. They're not really arboreal. They are, of course, capable of climbing, especially in an enclosure like this, and they have no problem going up logs and tall rocks. But you don't see this species in trees like you do the green iguana, right? This is Blue, our female. This is Rocky, our male. They are a bonded pair. They breed every year for us. But it's banana time, so I don't matter. Another similar thing to tortoises, like the pancake tortoises, these animals get much of their water from the food that they eat. Of course, they still require water, but they don't like an overly saturated environment. And in fact, they prefer it to be drier, and they like it really, really hot. So there you go, a little update for you guys on Rocky and Blue. I absolutely adore Cyclora, which is the genus that the rhinoceros iguana is part of. And the rhinoceros iguana gets its name because of these bony-like protrusions on the top of the head. Defending your uh, bananas there, I see. Don't worry guys, this is normal, they do it all the time. 
Okay, I can't stay with you guys. I got way more to do. Hi, guys. All right, who's hungry? Who's hungry? Come on. Where are you going? You're passing me. Give the red foot tortoises some greens here. Go ahead. Red foot tortoises, of course, do not hibernate. So they have to come inside too. They've got a nice, almost like horse stall type run here on the unfinished side of our building where they can get as dirty and dusty as they need to. You know what I think's going on with them? I think they smell the banana, especially on me. So that's why they're kind of like, dude, what's up with this? What's with this green stuff? Yeah, they smell banana. You guys can't have too much banana. Nope. <laughs> Go after your shoes. Guys, these are new. Come on. They want shoes and bananas. They don't want the greens. You gotta eat the greens. It's better for you. <laughs> The next thing I want to do is give you guys a little update on our fly river turtles, but also I need a little update on their health. If you recall, I've talked a lot about how sensitive their skin and shells are um, to funguses, lesions, bruising. So it's one of the reasons why they have such a controlled environment, why they have very high water quality that's heavily filtered and aerated, and why they are on very soft silica sand and nothing else. because. Um, and anything that is even slightly abrasive can really mess these guys up. So let's start with Skittle, our brand new female that UGST has named for us. And I know you're not going to like this, but I got to see what's going on. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Perfect. Wow. Okay. We're doing good. You look awesome, Skittle. Oh. Are you mad? Yes, you're mad. I understand. I just want to give you a good once over. You look awesome. Very awesome. Oh, that was a terrible idea. <laughs> you ready for me? Here's Scuttle, our male. Hey, buddy. Yeah, you're looking really good, too. We had a little bit of a problem for a while with Scuttle where he was getting some sores. But uh, they have pretty much gone away. Really looks uh, awesome. He responded to his treatment. And clearly his environment is treating him well. Isn't that right? Look at that beautiful pig nose. The pig nosed turtle, also known as the Fly River Turtle, Corona Kelly's in Sculpta, the only living member of its genus. Not a sea turtle, but a freshwater turtle with the nose of a pig and strong flippers. Uh, okay, now we're gonna feed Chief Brody the alligator snapping turtle. Who I have nothing for. Let's go take a ride real quick. Okay, so we're gonna go in here, we're gonna check out the seafood area and see if we can find some good fish for him. Ooh, rainbow trout, that's what we want. Also going to get him some little neck clams because alligator snapping turtles use those crushing plates and those massive jaws to break apart mollusks, and crustaceans. Half a dozen little necks. And can I also have uh, take a pound of the rainbow trout? Head up, mouth open. He's luring for food. How about some trout? So, we showed you guys in a recent video that Brody is once again spending the winter indoors because he still needs to put some more weight on because uh, ultimately we want to see him heavier than um, what he is right now, but he's been doing great. His progress has been through the roof. Uh, everybody's happy with him, including Chris, our veterinarian, but uh, we all agreed that it would just be a good idea to remove him from that big, beautiful pond for one more winter, let him continue to bulk up, uh, and then he gets to go back out into that pond in just a couple short months. Right. Normally, I'd want to give him the whole fish. 
that he gets everything. But fillets are good. What do you say, bud? Ooh, there we go. Wow. Suck that down. Ready for another? And he will eat all of this fish, absolutely no problem. So of course there are challenges in having him indoors like this. This tub has to be changed all the time. And uh, because he doesn't have as much room as he does outdoors, anywhere near the amount of room that he has outdoors, I like to make him exercise. So I like to see him reach for the food and uh, just simple stuff like that. You know, this time of year, his species would be pretty dormant in a torpor of sorts or a brumation. But again, we're dealing with a turtle that came to us in a very compromised situation. So because everything happens so slowly with them, they get skinny slowly, they can get sick slowly, and unfortunately they even die very slowly, uh, getting him back up to weight and shape has been a slow process too. But in just one year, this turtle's head and muscles and everything has really filled out tremendously. So he looks like a totally different turtle now, and he's just overall so much stronger. Aren't you, pal? Somebody else here is, uh, what do you got there, man? Nothing for you, buddy. You already ate today. Otis the turtle, everybody. You can't let the video be about somebody else, can you? So now, while Brody finishes up his trout, I'm gonna leave these clams in there for him too. This is an important part of his diet. He gets to forage for them. He can crush them with those crushing plates and ingest some of the shell, which is calcium for him. And he'll also get the meat of the clam uh, until his next feeding. Before we go, I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video. We just launched a brand new design featuring Chief Brody the Alligator Snapping Turtle to help celebrate and honor the incredible progress that this amazing turtle has made in just one year. And of course, we had to go with the Jaws theme. Casey hand drew and designed this whole thing just like she did the Otis Zilla shirt. So use the link, go on over to our bonfire page, please order something. Everything goes right back into the animals here and everything we do with them. And I hope you guys are having a fantastic holiday season and here's to the upcoming new year.